Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. Keep doing what you're doing. We are growing. So somebody in the comments had wanted me to do a reaction video on this video called Investigating Distressing Southern California Prison, Richard J. Donovan. So here it goes, without delay. On the outskirts of San Diego, on the edge of the Otai Open Space Reserve, lies a large California state prison, Richard J. Donovan. That beautiful lake right there is, in fact, by Richard J. Donovan Prison. Correctional facility, located in an area where the city ends and nature begins. In the event of an escape, an inmate would likely head to the Mexico border, which is only four miles away. Let's continue our California State Prison series. We'll check out the nearby community before looking at some prison facts, then some notable incidents, before finishing with some infamous inmates. While technically located in San Diego, California and San Diego County, Richard Donovan is 25 miles from the center of the city, which in California drive time can be over an hour away. It is more closely associated with the Otay Mesa community in the southern section of San Diego, which is what we'll focus on. With the Otay River running to the north and the Mexican border to the south, Otay Mesa is typically accessed by Interstate 805 and California State Route 905. Chula Vista, California is also a nearby large city. Otay is derived from the native language in the area, meaning brush and big mountain. The area lies in a semi-arid climate with high Okay. Is in the summer averaging around 80 degrees. Not too bad compared to some other prisons. Otay Mesa gets a C plus score from niche.com with weather, outdoor activities, and diversity all receiving A's. The negatives of the community seem to be the same from- The reason I said okay is because I know that dude. What a small world. ...of California, the cost of living and housing. Most notably, Otay Mesa has a large port of entry and is only one of two in San Diego County. It is the third busiest commercial port of entry on the U.S.-Mexican border. The area has a large trucking and warehouse industry that supports the border crossing. The area was settled for agriculture, but by the early 1900s, droughts forced most of the residents out of the area. The Great Depression worsened the agricultural community. San Diego annexed the town in 1956. In 1985, the port of entry opened and the area oh, was well, rezoned from agriculture. J. Donovan Correctional Facility there opened it its doors in July 1987 on 780 acres. The facility... You ask me, I think it's fucking cursed on Indian burial ground, but that's just if you ask me. It's like the Bermuda Triangle there. Any weird shit that you can think of, or not even think of, will happen. It goes by R.J. Donovan, R.J.D., or simply Donovan. It is the only facility named after a person in the California State Prison System. Richard J. Donovan was an assemblyman and judge who helped get the prison project f Don't quote me, but I think this dude committed suicide. Maybe he'll, they'll talk about it on here. And there was a, that picture was in our training room. It's kind of creepy having that dude stare at us. Big ass picture too. It's like the fucking eyes follow you. Unfortunately for him, he would pass away prior to its completion. Donovan is a true multi-mission facility with various security... Yeah, that looks like Echo Yard, the new facility. Levels, a mental health unit and sensitive needs yards. As of September 2022, the facility was housing just over 3,000 inmates. With a history of overcrowding at one time, Donovan was holding over 4,000 offenders. Population reports show that the majority of inmates, 1,395, are all level 3 offenders. The facility is a designated institution for inmates with severe- Just by looking at that gate, I could tell that's Echo Yard. It's all it's a brand new uh, facility. Level 2 non-designated programming. Your mental health issues along yeah. with the... So this wall right here, this wall no longer looks like that wall. It's painted. Uh, you could probably see a little bit of the painting. It's a mural from the whole entire wall. They started painting it. I don't know if I'm against painting. I guess it helps out their mental health. But, uh, you know, the Wild E. Coyote, the Roadrunner, old school cartoons. Like, that's kind of what it like that when you can run into a tunnel or you... <laughs> You think you're running into a tunnel, but it's actually a wall. It's that type of realistic painting. 
developmental disabilities. Given its close proximity to San Diego area hospitals, many inmates with health issues are housed here. The facility operates a bakery, shoe factory, and laundry facility. Each of these positions are preferred working assignments for offenders. Up until 2012, Donovan served as one of the reception centers for the state. The yeah, that's Echo. There's the sergeant's and lieutenant's office. Here's an inmate's appeal box right there. They can file their, their, their appeals if they're unhappy. That's where the complaints go. The complaint box. Reception areas were converted to sensitive needs yards. The facility has 1,657 authorized staff. Fucking half of those are on workman's comp. The other, uh, oh man, it is, it's, it's crazy. Positions, but two. That window right there, you guys can see that window just to, fuck, I'm giving you guys a tour here now. Thought my days of tours were over. But that is like your R&R, &R, like if uh, inmates want to get packages and stuff right there, the officer goes behind that window. That little slot is where they'll pass out the goodies, the chips and stuff like that. 83 of those remain unfilled. Donovan operates on a $264 million operating budget. Although this is the only state prison in San Diego County, there are several nearby detention centers. In fall 2023, the prison will begin a partnership with University of California, Irvine to provide educational services to incarcerated individuals. California also announced that they would be provided 30,000 secured laptops across all state prisons to those attending classes. The CDCR director at the time, Kathleen Allison, yeah, she's no longer the uh, CDCR director. Holy shit, man. I'm going to tell you something right now. Anybody who sits in that fucking chair, mark my words. Mark, write it down. They're not going to last more than a year. Trust me. That seat is so fucking hot. And all they really got to do is fix the fucking department. From the top down. It's, it's a fall guy spot. Or fall woman in this case. Either way, you're taking the fucking blame and said, give someone an education, you give them skills, you give them hope. After that, they are not coming back to prison. That is public safety. One of the most educated employees at the prison, a psychologist, had his license to practice. Okay, that shadow person right there. That shadow person is not a psychologist. As a 100% fact, that guy right there was my first partner. Oh my God, you guys are getting fucking gold right now. That guy right there was a correctional officer, was my first partner in the department in Charlie Jim. The dude was solid. At one point, the dude was solid, like a, like a crime fighter, like a super cop, but nonetheless solid. Like he, he knew how to, he, he knew how to handle himself amongst inmates when, when it was dangerous at that point. It's very staff assaultive. That dude got assaulted by, by, by an inmate, by inmates, a very bad staff assault had to get, um, you know, neck surgery and all of that plates, screws, and it was serious. But right here, he is saying prison guard exposes dirty secret at Donovan state prison. He claims guards sleep on the job, steal from inmates. When that dude had, was at Donovan, I was not at Donovan just goes to show you. Something can happen somewhere and you want, and people want to blame everybody. I wasn't there during these allegations, whether they are, they're not true. Um, let's see what this, let's see what my old partner has to say. This revoked in 2018. Jeremy Trimble was accused of smuggling cell phones, tobacco, and methamphetamine into the prison. It came to light after an inmate and patient of his attempted to take his own life by overdosing on the drug. Not Again, they keep talking about a psychologist. That silhouette is not a psychologist. You probably wonder, how do I know this? Number one, I recognize the dude's voice when this, when he aired his little uh, news thing a few years back. Number two, they said his name. They said his name. <laughs> They're like, so-and-so wishes to remain anonymous. And I'm like, holy fuck, you guys just said his name. Uh, I don't know if they thought that out. Not only did he allegedly smuggle the drugs into the prison, but he crossed the nearby Mexican border to obtain them. He will never practice in medicine again. Also in 2018, some of the residents in one housing unit complained to staff of a foul odor coming from a cell. Uh, okay, so again, 
the, I see what they're doing here. They're using pictures. They're using pictures from what that one, my previous partner submitted. Like, think I'm not, yeah, that's him by looking at the name tag. I don't know. Did they get this information from him? I don't know. It's kind of what it looks like. They're they're talking about a foul small a foul smell in the housing unit. I know what they're gonna bring up right here. Correctional staff brushed off the smell as sewer stench. Officers did eventually approach one inmate assigned to the cell, but were assured it was nothing. All right, so I kind of me just putting two and two together. I don't know why they're talking about all this like dirtiness while they're showing my old partner. And then showing people sleeping on the job, right? Kind of makes me believe, like, is this dude behind this video? I don't know. But right now they're talking about, uh, they're about to talk about a dead person that was, a dead inmate that was dead for three days. But they don't get it confused with these pictures that they're showing. After the smell continued to persist, staff made entry and found a decomposing corpse. The man was found to have died from natural causes several days earlier. What's unclear is why his cellmate tried to cover it up. On the topic of odors, an offender at Donovan sued the state after he was forced to live with raw sewage. Okay, so yeah, I, fuck. There should never be an inmate dead for three days without us knowing about it. There should never, that should never happen for like all kinds of reasons. Um, counts, right? There's counts where we're supposed to make sure they're not dead or escaped. Uh, pill lines. Uh, recreation yard, chow, security checks, security checks when you walk around the building. There's just so many reasons why you sh an inmate should not be dead for three days. On top of that, what about a cellmate? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't like to live next to a dead person for a few days. Unless you're his cellmate. I believe the cellmate was in there for doing exactly just that. Living with a dead body for days. And that body didn't die of natural causes. His cell for several days. He was quoted as saying, My cell was out of control flooded. There was everything that comes out of a toilet out on my 6x6 six six floor. Okay, this is, you, this is it, man. You guys are getting the juicy stuff right here. Everything I've said in my past videos is all adding up. Did I not tell you? Did I not tell you that there was a plumber at Donovan in charge of toilets? Couldn't even get the toilets right. Okay, now he's the chief deputy warden in charge of people inmates and staff thousands all right so yeah oh my god like not too long ago before i resigned you see i used to go help out on all the yards man like because i know how fucked up things were and i would just walk over there and talk to the inmates i was very 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 good at talking to these inmates and breaking them down like breaking them down like verbally um I was a watch commander, so overall in charge of the prison. I hear on Charlie Yard, inmates in housing unit 14 do not want to lock it up for counts. I'm like, fuck, man, let's go. And I was a lieutenant, but I was the type of guy to go see for myself. Boots on the ground, right? Because rumors can fly from point A to point B. Sure enough, it was an OG inmate, man, a transgender, and they said there was poop in the toilet. And I, I, yeah, there was poop in the toilet. They were upset. They're like, hey, man, we just want to be heard, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, I get it, man. I wouldn't want to be living in in, in filth. I said, I'll tell you what, man, let me go locate a, a plumber snake. Let me go locate like a plunger or something. Oh, uh, we appreciate that, LT. Just just you hearing us. Yeah, we'll go back into the cell. Stuff like that. that's that simple, right? We found them, something. I, I believe they unplugged it. But yeah, the toilets were out of control. Now you got the plumber running the prison. My socks and shoes were soaked. It had also gotten on my sheets on my mattress. My whole cell stinks bad to the point where I threw up. I couldn't sleep and it was disgusting to be forced to eat all of my meals inside the cell on such conditions. Three inmates at Donovan attacked and killed a fellow offender in May 2021. The trio, Aaron Sims, Leslie Bond, and Andrew Hofer, allegedly- Look at these guys right here. Yes. Yes. Yes, they did kill a white inmate. Well, those fellas are right, right there. One of them, one of them is in a certain position for a certain white gang and is trying to become a made member. That's why he did what he did. The other two, two poor fellas, that young looking kid right there, <laughs> believe they're only in there for like DUI. only had like one year to go in their sentence. Okay. 
again, one of those guys knew what he was doing, was on a mission to do what he had wanted to kill the dude. The other two guys, poor fellas, were just going along for the ride. Well, guess what, buddies? You guys are all three getting charged for murder. Yeah, I was there. I was there. He attacked John Thurs with a shank in the wreck yard. He would die after being transported to a local hospital. You know, I came from another yard because I heard, uh, when you hear they uh, three on one, they got weapons, they got weapons, you hear that on the radio. Oh man, I always just had it in me to just be over there, right? I don't know if I wanted to be with the troops, if I wanted to be nosy in case it cracked off. Just fuck, I would just go. Plus my homies were all over there, so there I am. There I am drinking my coffee when this guy is dying. It didn't look like he was dying. They, he was getting medically treated. Um, it didn't look like he was dying. But yeah, when you get hit in certain vital organs, you're going to die. That easy, that fast. Hospital. Each of the men were previously convicted of crimes involving death or serious assaults. Sims was convicted of assault with serious bodily injury. Bond was at Donovan due to a conviction for second degree murder. Lastly, Hofer was found guilty of gross vehicular manslaughter. Gross vehicular manslaughter, DUI. You see what I mean? Now, look at assault and vehicle manslaughter. Now you're both being charged with murder, okay? Because you wanted to ride with the homie. You know, my mom used to tell me, uh, careful who you hang out with. Pff, it's that fucking easy. Murder. While intoxicated, a series of small riots occurred at the prison in 2019. That's my buddy's uh, riot right there. That's Alpha Yard. Ooh, this was uh, the Mexicans going off on the whites. This was um, this was the Mexicans going off on the whites, the Southsiders on the GP Yard. The reason they did that is because they did not want to participate in the non-designated program. Mixing, mixing of the SAY and the GP. So what better way than to fucking start stabbing everybody in sight? Makes sense to me. 2020. In February 2019, a group of 50 inmates was involved in a large fight, which was eventually quelled using pepper spray. Ten inmates were taken to the hospital. Uh, I believe one of them got stabbed in the eyeball. And in August 2019, another large melee in the prison yard would break out between 80 to 100 inmates. Four shanks were found after officers were able to get the situation under control. One inmate suffered stab wounds to his face, head, and neck. Unfortunately, a year later, it wouldn't only be in That is the, uh, you see, the little, that's Alpha Yard. That's, that's the right. Those are all the Mexicans. Those are all the Southsiders. On to the right, you got... Um, a uh, single staff member over there. I don't know why, but he's definitely in the way of those 40 millimeters. Um, yeah, that's after a riot. That's what it looks like. You zip tie them all. And this, for some reason, there was a helicopter watching. So just so you know, we weren't kicking them around as it was alleged back in the day. I was not here for this one. I came in on third watch and helped clean up the mess. Mates injured in another wreck yard incident. A group of offenders attacked six correctional officers. Hey, you see that? You see that captain right there? He's now an AW. That is the only, only, only solid, strongest dude that held it down for the troops and for what's right during that Pollard administration. They kept screwing that guy over, putting fake investigations on that guy. They need to promote that guy to. Oh my God, if he ever made it to Warden, that shit would be badass, but they need to just continuously promote that guy. Extremely competent. Used to be a Marine. Dude knows what's up. Stab wounds, lacerations, and possible broken bones. Joe Mendez, Luis Delgado, Michael Figueroa, and William Barbo were suspected in the attack. Before we move on to in another wreck yard incident, a group of offenders attacked six correctional officers, causing stab wounds, lacerations, so they jumped real quick. I was talking about the good old solid captain and they jumped real quick. They're talking about another staff assault that happened. And yeah, listen to the names that they say. It's impossible broken bones. Joe Mendez. Boom. That guy. That guy was a somebody. He's now a nobody. I don't know how else to tell you, right? I didn't, I didn't bring this up. It's fucking, it happened. 
He was a somebody. Now he's a nobody. Luis Delgado, Michael Figueroa, and William Barbo were suspected in the attack. Before we move on to a couple infamous inmates, don't forget... Yeah, that was a bad fucking staff assault. That was a horrible fucking staff assault where two officers got stabbed with weapons, hit with their own batons, pepper sprayed with their own pepper sprayed, and... And that was brewing. Fuck, I'm, I'm putting it out there for you guys. That was brewing. We knew that something was brewing because you had a captain. You had a captain on that yard that was an imbecile. A straight imbecile. And he was homies with the warden. He was able to just bamboozle and get away with his buffoonery because of his connection with the warden. As a result, he had an open door policy with the Southsiders to include that one inmate that I said was a somebody. And it created this fucking atmosphere. It was like a, a, what do they call it? A powder keg ready to explode. Just the enabling, the empowering. So there's, there's word controversy, whether disrespect, whether disrespect kicked it off or disrespect didn't kick it off. But I want you to know what was building, right? And I'm talking about disrespect from the officers to the inmates allegedly that's what was one thing that was said but i don't give a fuck because those cops were stabbed beaten it's a miracle that one of them didn't die it's a miracle okay and that night i came in and i fucking looked at that one dude that dude that was a somebody and i said really dude uh, i was like really over disrespect because they had fucking i know I don't know. It's just a fucked up situation, man. It's just a fucked up situation. That fucking should have never happened. After that, everybody became more vocal at the prison. It shouldn't have taken that, but it didn't matter because they fucking covered up that administration anyways. Things did not get better after that. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my California prison profiles. We can't talk about famous California inmates without talking about the Menendez brothers. They were convicted in the murder of their parents in 1996. The state argued that they killed their parents for their inheritance, but the defense argued that they were abused by their father. They were separated after their conviction for 22 years due to their level four offender status, but were reunited at Donovan in 2018. If they behave here, they may finish their life without parole sentences together. One of the largest figures in rap history the is homie, also housed- The homie Suge Knight right there, or the big homie. I believe they said his case got overturned or something like that. Donovan, former music executive and now felon, Suge Knight is probably most well known for his time with Death Row Records. In 2015, he drove his car into a man killing him. Knight may have had the hardest fall in rap history. He has been in state prison since 2018 and has a parole eligibility date of 2034. Our last infamous inmate is Charles Tex Watson of the Manson family. He you know, they kept saying that guy was very faint. I always heard the name, Tex Watson, Tex Watson, Tex Watson. To tell you the truth, I don't even know what yard this dude was. I don't ever, that face doesn't even look familiar. So he probably just one of those images that just laid extremely low because I don't have any interactions with this guy. Along with his accomplices, were convicted of murdering five people, including actor Sharon Tate. The following night, he would participate in the murders of Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. He would be sentenced to death, but with the overturning of the death penalty, it was commuted to life in prison. Watson may spend the rest of his life at R.J. Donovan. This was another California prison profile. Donovan is a multi-mission facility housing all types of offenses and security levels. Don't let this fool you, a series of large fights and violence has occurred at the facility over the last couple of years. This is no Pelican Bay or High Desert, but I definitely wouldn't want to end up here. Let me know in the comments if you knew of this prison on the outskirts. Yeah, so they covered they covered major, major things. They covered uh, my old partner that kind of blew the whistle or said that cops were doing sleeping on the job, stealing and shit like that. They covered the dead inmate for three days. That one was wild. <laughs> Should have not happened. They covered an alpha yard riot between the Mexicans and the whites. The Mexicans were not happy with the 50-50 yards. Understandably so. Um, they covered the horrible staff assault with that one captain who ha somehow got his job back after lying. I don't know how the fuck that happens. Uh, what else did they cover? Mm. Oh, the uh, murder of the white dude by the three assailants and one of them in there was for DUI.
Wow. So, just wanted to throw a little jam out there for you guys, man, to show my appreciation for and, and support for all you guys. This is fucking awesome. I could have never imagined this was going to go down the way it's going down, man. So, um, keep dropping in the comments what else you would like to see. All right? Keep pushing forward. San Diego.